Good morning. Good afternoon. Hi. Um, was there an issue with the, the Zoom link or was I just confused? Um, I'm not sure what was the problem. Uh, okay, yeah. No. Maybe it just takes time for people to join. Never mind. We'll get started in a minute or two. Um, I've posted the meeting notes into the Zoom chat. You can add your name, anything I would like to talk about. Hi, Victor. Hello, Oliver. Good morning, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Um, let's see. Please add your name. I guess I should do that as well. I was looking at the wrong area. Wait for you, Oliver. Does anyone have any um, agenda items? Um, Taylor, uh, I don't know if it's uh, if it's okay, okay to read this, but uh, I just wanted to give a few minutes to uh, the discussion I opened in the in the repository about the um, practices we talked about last uh, last meeting. Yeah, definitely. Um, I see that. In the list sounds good. I will, that's on the agenda. I'm going to move the poll request below that. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to add?
All right. Now let's see. Today, um, OSS Summit Japan is going. We did a um, a little recording for that. That's will be late this evening. Did anyone else do anything for OSS Japan? Or is there anything <clears throat> of note that people want to call out? Okay. One summit. Don't have much details about that. Um, is anyone? speaking there or coupon EU. I guess CFPs are open on that. So if you haven't submitted and you want to do it for KubeCon EU, make sure you do it. All right. Um, yeah, let's open this one up. If no one has anything else to add. If you do, go put it in the notes. All right. Uh, ben, do you want to talk some about this? And I'm happy to let you share your screen if you'd like. Or I can check. No, we, uh, I don't have anything else, so uh, <laughs> I'm fine with you sharing the screen. Uh, again, uh, this is okay. This is just a continuation, okay, of the discussion we had uh, before about you know of uh, adding best practices. Um, uh, I my specialty is security, therefore you know I I'm taking on you know security best practices. And uh, and in general, okay, I think the ba ba the idea behind this my proposal is to create network security best practice uh, um, paper or, or or description, okay, where where we discuss uh, the issues uh, around uh, network security in in uh, with installation of Kubernetes, and um, I think it's pretty important, okay, for 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 telcos um and and into this industry okay because most likely okay uh they are going to start to install kubernetes by themselves and 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 will you know get into the pitfalls uh around so that, that's why we are here and and i think that that there are two major uh um parts of the discussion around network security of kubernetes and 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 i think that one is that is the the actually the Access to the Cube API and around the Cube and the infra and to the infrastructure components uh, um, themselves. So, um, so we, on the one hand, okay, can, uh, uh, making sure okay that that the Cube API uh, server is um, the API server is it, it has a limited network uh, network access and all it, it is uh, it is separated from the public internet enough and and. Uh, and not and people are not allowed to connect it from from the outside. The second is actually not just the network uh, segmentation, but but the the actual access control of Kubernetes to use uh, to enable Arba to to remove any uh, authorizations for anonymous user in Kubernetes. Uh, to, uh, what I wrote here is disable the insecure access configuration of the Qubit of the API server, and there are several few around this. Uh, um, uh, point okay we could we could add here and and could describe in more detail uh, what to do um, about the test tool okay I, I'm I'm here there are things here okay which can be easily tested and there are things which are pretty hard to test so we'd need to uh, uh, to somehow only uh, point out those which can be we, we can which we can test in the test uh, in the CNF test bench and those things we cannot um, this is one part the other part is actually the, the protecting the, uh, the the control plane and, and uh, machinery of, of kubernetes uh, making sure the network security uh, of uh, the mutual TLSs are in place uh, the certificates and uh, are and private keys are in place uh, maybe even to, uh, talk about whether you know when to uh, swap uh, private keys and certificates uh, in a cluster and so on. 
So I think that these are the two main parts, okay, the, the Cube API and the segment, and uh, the other part is the Kubernetes system components, the secure communication of them. These are two main parts I would like to focus on. Uh, and I'm, I'm, guys, I'm, I'm really open, okay, I'm really open for, you know, any comments. Um, and I'm, I'm ready to start to work on and write these things up in detail. Um, just, you know, want to make sure that, that I'm aligned with, with our goals. That's it. Um, they, it sounds great to me, a, a good area to keep expanding on. Uh, does anyone have any comments or questions for Ben right now or just in general? Oh, maybe just a comment over organization. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I also like this idea a lot. It's it's definitely the beginning, <laughs> just the beginning of security. Yeah. But there are uh, you write that there are two components of protecting this API. Uh, but then in the second section below, if you scroll down a little bit, please, uh, that's where we um, talk about TLS security. But I think TLS security is higher up. <laughs> so I I think in terms of networking. There are two components. There's the firewall and uh, encryption. <laughs> and then a second level is really RBAC and users and all that, which is just honestly a very weak point of Kubernetes generally. <laughs> so uh, you don't get a lot of security from uh, RBAC. But the, um, yeah, talking about encryption and how to handle those, uh, best practices of uh, dealing with certificates, things like that, uh, maybe even hosting your own CA, something like that. So uh, to me, those are, are the high level networking related things you should address. It's here, it's just the organization. I, I would pull that up a little yeah. bit and move RBA down. Yeah, the, the order here is not, uh, I would say it's not definitive, okay? The order here is, uh, is just, you know, the way, you know, I try to organize it as, as two main parts. Not in the sense of what what is less important, more important than you know for the time being only you know to write up to not to forget. <laughs> um, I would say <clears throat> the organization, or maybe even priority of what's important to people, that can be an effort that someone cares about that can help write up, ideally it would be supplemental documentation. If that's something that you care about, then focus on that. If there's mm -hmm. an area that you think is important or you're passionate about, but it may not be, it may be lower level or higher level, it's okay. We don't have to start with one specific area and, and write up everything before moving on to another. So if you wanna write about this specific one, so the the limiting access to the the Kubernetes API never has public access. This is something that could be written up now, but even before yeah. something else that might be even more critical, but harder to write up. Yeah, the, um, like pumping uh, CAs every year. Yeah, sure. Uh, also, another question, okay, I, I was thinking about, okay, that, that it is obvious, okay, to say that limiting access to Cube API is, is, is really, you know, a, a, a very, very basic security measure, setting up a, 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 a firewall rules and, a, and limiting access to it, but, but the question is, what I am asking is an open question for all of you of, of, of uh, um, whether, you know, the opposite direction is uh, is a, is something that applicable in this industry where you know we can limit uh, the traffic from the cluster to the outside world, or or this is something that you know rather problematic because because the way that usually these uh, CNFs are, are, will work, okay, they they will need connectivity uh, to the outside world. I 
I think it's going to depend on the organization. Some of them we've um, we've talked about this a little bit when we've gone into like air gap discussions. So there's some that may not allow any public access even they don't even want to have proxies or anything they have everything on internal systems and then some of them may have some type of proxy or you um, have a partial so maybe your image repository is within the organization's network and they don't allow access to say images for the uh, different components outside even if they're dependencies. So I think that's gonna be de dependent. And then any type of other, I guess, call outs, whatever that would be, would be, I I'd say it'd be similar. I don't know uh, if best practices, yeah. if that would tie in um, specific around like allowing or not, like, is it, but, the process of doing that. So if someone says we have a use case where we need to limit access for going outside versus in, inbound, um, those would be where we would talk about what are the best practices for implementing these? Because that's, that's what we're really looking at here. When you're implementing the applications running services on a platform and the platform components themselves, and you're building in a Kubernetes space environment, what are the best practices for implementation so that you can take advantage of that environment? <clears throat> yeah. Some of it's technologies and some of it's tied into like the methodologies around it, which if you do things in a certain way, then you enable other things to do even better. If you don't, then you cripple those methodologies, which sometimes it's necessary, but that's what we're trying to highlight. Yeah, cool. Um, so, okay, I'm, I'm going to start to, to do some write-ups, okay? Um, okay, and, and we'll align those later stage where, where to put it. Uh, in the in the repository. Um, one place, if you you can, um, I mean, we could probably just change this whole thing to security. It's kind of around least privilege, but um, if you want to create a Google Doc and have like a shared draft or whatever for what you're working on you could sure. link it from this best practice discussion i mean feel free to put anything in here and then you know we can add comments like tal, tal has done um, and we can add stuff here but if you want to work from something like a google doc then do that and then just link it to the discussion maybe okay. turn on okay comment capability for the doc um, so that other people can join in and do suggest edits or whatever and and then start building it out. So this particular doc, which we've linked a few times in the discussion, this one's around least privilege. So one of the most recent things working with Ian we're looking at is what happens when you need to deviate? So whenever a best practice that everyone goes, yes, this is great. We all agree, we want to get there, but right now it, we can't implement it for whatever reason. It may be six months, it may be 18 months or who knows before they can get to that ideal goal. So what do you do? So we wrote up some information here and then here's, um, so this is on the deviation. And then we started writing up a new set, accounts and rights. So I think this one might actually be related a little bit to what um, you're talking about with the Kubernetes API, Ben. But feel free to look through this one, like this is a Kubernetes API server. So you yeah. have, um, this is referring to the service accounts. So you can have yeah. user accounts, you can have service accounts and 
what type of access do we want to give for the CNFs and what are the best practices around um, accounts and how they should be used for CNFs from a security standpoint. And there's a lot of other content in here, so feel free to go through, <clears throat> uh, especially from like the networking perspective. You can come and look in here. Um, there's comments from different folks, but you can come and look at um, different examples and then what are we talking about and give it some relationship back to this. So limit access to Kubernetes API. So if you want to say out of this limiting access, which is kind of a somewhat higher level, you could say, how do you want to limit access? We definitely want to say never public facing. That's a good practice. Okay. Well, maybe that's the first thing you write up. Yeah. Um, but feel free to just kind of brainstorm is the idea with all these. And we have a big dump of information. And then eventually we come down to something like um, specific. Um, oops, I tried to open it and failed there. Eventually we end up with a specific one that we feel this one is something we can agree this is a good practice you may not always be able to do it but it's a good practice so let's write it up as a very specific thing that we can recommend that rolls up into a higher level yeah sure okay i think i'm i'm going to start with a google document okay because more i i assume that most of the text will be you know movable around and restructured around you know uh, different places uh, i'm guys i'm really open to ideas also uh, i think um, matan was the one who who, who, uh, who had this idea of of, of uh, prioritization okay, of different parts so i'm i'm just tell me some ideas okay i, I will continue and will dis continue to discuss this Sounds good. Yeah, once you have something you'd like to share after, I mean, this is great so far just for the first kicking off mm -hmm. ideas. But when you have some more content, just share it. And then we can start iterating from there until something pops out and we go, this can be written up. Let's do a pull request. Okay, sure. And then if anyone would like to help Ben, please reach out and tell them so you can sure. start working through That's this. Really great. Does, does anyone have anything else or we'll move on to the pull request? All right, thanks, Ben. Okay, awesome. All right. Um, I see the interested parties. That one should be pretty straightforward. Just accept it. It looks like you have two there. I thought only one. I don't know what happened, but I was rejected. Oh, OK. Someone else had one. All right. <clears throat> Just gonna, we can approve this. The Zoom is in the way of my accept. All right. <clears throat> All right, great. A few more added to the interested parties. Let's go back to the request. 
air gapped mode. All right. Um, hi, Ian. So uh, let's see. Jeffrey submitted this. He's um, maybe out for a, a little bit before he can join back in. And we, have, of course, have the holidays, which I could extend that a little bit. Um, but this one is a, this is a user story. So a set of user stories around um, air-gapped environments so that we can relate these context-wise so that those comments or questions, comments about external calls from CNS that could go outside may be related. So if you end up with the best practice, and probably be related to some of these use, uh, user stories. CNF using some licensing model that requires um, dynamically checking license with a remote server. Um, GitOps methodology. So they're pulling stuff in. They have a some, some repository that's pulling stuff in from other, um, probably other repositories and then SaaS-based services. All right. Ian, did you dig through this one yet? Uh, I haven't, honestly, not properly. Okay. Um, I'm trying to look if there's anything new since the last one, 20 days ago. It looks like a lot of these are just comments um, and you responded about networks um, 10 days ago. Oh, Victor, okay. All right. Well, this was actually maybe right around the last call anyway. So this was um, tying in with licensing. Like, what are we talking about here? Let's ex um, make sure it's clear on the, the mechanism and stuff. Oh, that's a good one a short definition of what we mean by air gapped. And I've heard different things, so I agree. And maybe um, if we come up with <clears throat> the definition here, it can go into our glossary. We referred, because air gap does not all, always mean you have no internet cable. You are disconnected from the world. It would probably rarely mean that these days. Um, I have seen it, but it's actually been quite a while. Okay, what's the other one? What is this suggestion, Victor? Well, I just noticed that. It. Yeah, I noticed that in the glossary they have uh, they have an issue uh, referring to GitOps. So maybe mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to have cross reference there. All right, sounds good. Right into the CNCF glossary. Yeah, but now I I, I don't know um, when I put it there, it was in, in the to-do list. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they have implemented, but um, maybe, I don't know, if we have just tracking that or waiting for their definition. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, will this comment work when it has three dashes? I'm guessing it probably will. Well, three yeah, and two dashes. Yeah, probably two. <laughs> I'm going to commit it. I mean, you're just saying let's track what they have. Or that I can was... modify it. Just give me a second. Yeah. Oh, too late. We'll <laughs> okay. see if it worked. <laughs> um, you check, refresh and check. It may, it may be good. I think as long as it had the two dashes first, everything after will be a comment. Tonkai, um, this is just questions. All right, so we probably just need more responses in here before going on. I don't know how much um, Jeffrey's going to be able to respond, so I'll try to reach out. There also may need someone else to 
uh, help see if someone can assist on that specifically people that are familiar with the air gapped environment so ideally um, some service providers or something can comment on that <clears throat> or if there's anyone that's helped with those installation for service providers in air gapped environments Any comments, questions, people want to add stuff, thoughts around air gapped environments? Update this. <clears throat> air gapped environments. User stories, because that's what this is about. Anything else? All right. Moving on, um, meeting schedule through the end of the year. I will not be, uh, I will be out on the 20th and the 27th. And, um, and actually probably the third, um, potentially. So Ian, are you gonna be around any of those times? And is there an interest to have any of these? Let's start with the 20th. Are you gonna be around for the 20th? Ian? Let me try that without the mute. Um, I'll be around for the 20th, but not the 27th or the 3rd. Um, I don't know how anyone else feels about having a meeting on the 20th. I mean, we can schedule it, but the thing is, if nobody's going to turn up, then we're not going to get very much done. I mean, if, I mean, if you want to show up and then if no one is here, um, you know, by, let's say, five after if you feel like nobody's here then it can be canceled at five after instead of starting or ten yeah, after whatever, however long you want to wait all right okay let's let's do the 20th and see how it works then all right so um any objections to canceling on the 27th All right. I think we have any, better things to do. Yeah. Any objections to canceling on the um, the third? All right. So one more meeting on the twentieth of December scheduled. Uh, ben, were you unmeeting? I may have not waited long enough. Did you have comments? <laughs> Sorry? Oh, I thought I saw you unmute for a second and I may have moved on too fast. All right. Um, no, no, it's okay. Okay. So uh, last meeting of the year for this uh, working group is December 20th. Um, Ian will get it started. And if folks want to talk and start working on some things, then please join it. And we'll cancel the 27th and the 3rd. We'll remove those, have them removed from the calendar. And, um, and we'll be back on the 10th after that. Thanks everyone. If you want help or want to work on anything this week, please reach out. Uh, user stories, best practices. I will find some time to work with you. Um, and of course, anyone else that wants to collaborate with folks, just you know, reach out. Otherwise, I will see everyone else in 2022. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, guys. Happy holidays. Stay safe out there.